Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10 and support the channel at the same time. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to another edition of the Match of the Gathering Market Watch. Another huge week for Commander in the secondary market, I'll tell you right now. Although, we're seeing some different cards, which is actually kind of cool, because we have been seeing a lot of the same cards people have been pulling out of the secondary markets upgrade, those Commander 2018 decks. But today, you're going to notice that people are moving on, discovering some new things. Some of the other cards that have been popular starting to settle down, which is good news for people that were holding out and waiting to pick those up. So we'll get into all that. We'll also talk about the other formats as well as we always do. Standard slowing down a little bit as people are starting to prepare already for the rotation and the next set coming out, which is really right around the corner. Quickly before we get started, if you check out the description below, you'll find a few ways to help support what we do here at the channel. Our Patreon page is linked down there. Also, you're going to find links to products on Amazon. Once you go through that initial link, anything you buy on Amazon, no matter what it is, will get a small percentage for the channel. And finally, Flipside Gaming, of course, still offering that promo code for viewers. It also helps us out a lot. So as always, thank you not only to the folks that look at those links, but to all the viewers. I appreciate y'all. So let's get into it. We're going to begin with the top five standard legal cards that have lost value this week. Number five, the Scarab God. Down 79 cents to 1697. And if you're just playing standard, this might seem like a surprise in some ways because the card's performing very well. And as a matter of fact, this card looks just as good as it always has. However, it is approaching rotation. And unfortunately, this isn't a card that's done a whole lot in like modern or legacy or vintage or anything like that. It's still a good commander card, though. So over the coming weeks, this will continue to drop. I do think it will probably stabilize closer to the $10 to $12 mark because a lot of Commander players have been planning to pick this up for a long time. So I don't expect it to completely bottom out right away or anything like that, but it will be going down some more. Number four, Resplendent Angel, down 95 cents to thirteen seventy nine. This is a card that a lot of folks had high hopes for going into the standard meta, especially when it was first previewed. But it didn't really pan out. There's a few decks that were trying to make it happen, like the Knights deck played this a little bit, as well as some other like White Weenie style decks. Maybe post rotation, though, things could change. This is one to watch for in the future. Number three, Tezzeret Artifice Master, down $1.55 to $13.09. This one's kind of interesting because it really hasn't panned out, much like the previous card. The Mono Blue Artifact decks were running it, and some still are, but really a lot of the more successful builds aren't even running this anymore. So it really hasn't lived up to maybe some of the excitement during the time period when it was previewed. But with that being said, is it going to be good post-rotation? Maybe, but what's awkward about this card compared to the previous one is we're also losing all those Kaladesh artifacts, and that's going to take a toll on this card too. So I don't know if this one ever gets off the ground in standard, honestly. Number two, Nicol Bolas the Ravenger, down $1.67 to thirty-four fifty-three. Another card that is still seeing standard play in these Grixis mid-range decks However, with the combination of more packs being open in Magic 2019 and the fact that those Dragon decks have kind of fallen off when it comes to competitive play, this card is taking a pretty serious dip and I think it's going to start losing value relatively quickly, at least for the next few weeks. We'll have to see what happens with this card post-rotation though because it will still be very strong in a much more narrow field of cards. Number 1, Nexus of Fate. Down 348 to 2999. Not a whole lot I can say about this card I haven't said in previous videos. This, of course, is a key part of the Turbofog deck, which surprised a lot of people during Pro Tour 25th anniversary. A lot of craziness happened that weekend and throughout the week as this card spiked pretty intensely. Since then, cooler heads have prevailed. The card's been coming down. It will continue to come down. But that Turbofog deck could still be very good post-rotation, maybe even better. It's already pretty good. So this is a card that maybe will decline for the next few weeks, but could have a surge early in the next meta. All right, let's move on to the top five standard legal cards that have gained value this week. Coming in at number five is Nezahal Primal Tide, up 23 cents to 261. Not a huge increase here necessarily, but this is a card that sees play in a lot of decks, even if it's just like one ofs and sideboards. But the Turbo Fog deck, you usually find it there. You're also going to find it in control builds sometimes, and also in the Mono Blue Artifact deck, which is pretty popular right now. Put it all together, and some people are also speculating that this is a card that could cross over well into the next meta when the field of cards is narrower. So it has at least a small increase this week. Number four, a Johnny's Influence, up so 40 cents to $1.19. Now, this is not in the regular Magic 2019 set, but you can find it in the White Planeswalker deck. The reason it's going up 40 cents this week is because there are people brewing in a Johnny deck that's really meant to be for post rotation. Now, I gotta be honest with you, I'm a little skeptical that this card makes the final build of that deck, even if this deck is successful. 
Just because four mana, two on color at sorcery speed doesn't feel all that great to me, although the effect here is pretty good. But I feel like those decks, typically right now you're seeing two or three copies in these builds. Once we get the cards from Guilds of Ravnica, I have a feeling something will probably kick this one out. But at least for right now, people are trying something different, and I like that a lot. Number three, Twilight Prophet at 49 cents to 857. Couple things going on here. First off, the Vampire decks, which you're probably pretty familiar with. Unfortunately, they didn't become all that big in the previous metas. Well, most of the cards are not leaving with rotation. A lot of these cards are from the Ixalan block. So people are paying attention. Potentially that Vampire deck could be very good, especially at the beginning of the next meta. So we'll have to see if that pans out. But another reason this is going up is because it is a great upgrade to the Subjective Reality Commander 2018 deck as well. Number two, Tattered Mummy from Magic 2019, up $1.45 to $1.95. This one's a little unusual. This is the Magic 2019 version. You can't find it in the regular set. There is a copy in the Welcome deck, and there's four copies in the Black Planeswalker deck. So it's not an extremely rare card. This isn't one of those cards you can only find in the Welcome deck or anything like that. And the Amonkhet version went up a little bit this week, but it's still much cheaper. Ultimately, the question is, why are people buying this card? Well, it's because of the Zombie deck. Now, it didn't quite get off the ground in this current meta, but there's a good chance, much like the Vampire deck we just talked about, that this deck could be much better post-rotation. It's keeping a lot of key pieces, like Liliana from Magic 2019, for example. And I do think this has a good chance of actually getting there. Time will tell, and of course, a lot's going to be dependent on what Ravnica brings to us. But a lot of brewers are trying to build this deck and get ahead of things. Number one, Teferi Hero of Dominaria. Up 292 to 4307. Wow, Teferi just keeps climbing. Eventually, he's got to stabilize, but the reason for this, and we talked about it a lot last week, is there's a lot of key decks running this. Of course, control decks in Modern are running this control decks in Standard, and then you throw the Turbo Fog on top of it, and that wants four copies of this. That really sparked this card even more. I do think it will stabilize within the next couple weeks, especially as we close in on rotation, but at least right now, Teferi is very expensive. Also sees play at least a little bit in Vintage and Legacy. So this is one to watch for the future, and I'm really curious to see how this performs post-rotation. All right, let's move on to the top five modern legal cards that have lost value this week. Coming in at number five is Chalice of the Void, down 251 to 5206. This is the modern Masters version. Now, this card was reprinted in Masters 25. That's part of the reason it has been a little softer. But also, I am seeing a decline in percentage of play in modern decks right now, and that's just because of which decks are popular currently. So that could change any given week, maybe even this weekend. We'll have to wait and see. As far as Vintage and Legacy goes, it does appear this card's seeing the same amount of play. So I don't really expect it to go down all that much, maybe stabilizing around $50. Number four, Crucible of Worlds from 10th edition. Going down 258 to 3779, a card that sees a lot of play. But as you know, this was reprinted in Magic 2019, so it's still very soft. Number three, Vegvine, down 309 to $50. This card went crazy during Pro Tour 25th anniversary, thanks to the Vegvine deck having a coming out party there. The deck still looks great, looks amazing, but so much hype was built up that weekend. At one point, this card was listing for around $90 to $95, which is insane. Well, luckily, we're past that. This is now down to $50. It will come down a little more, but I don't think it comes down all that much more because the deck still looks really good. Number two, Mox Opal. This is the Magic 2015 version, down 376 to 104.23. So we saw the Scars version go down last week a little bit. This one is just following. I think 105 is probably just going to be the average price of this card, just generally. I mean, it could flux between 100 and 110 from week to week, but it's just so popular in so many important decks, including Ironworks Combo, which is driving it a lot now. Different affinity builds. Then you go into even vintage Paradoxical Outcome decks running this. The thing's all over the place. I could probably name decks all day. Yeah, Max Opal, it's not really going to move all that much until it eventually gets reprinted. Number one, Copy Enchantment. This used to see some modern play back in the day in like the Enduring Ideal deck a little bit, but now, more recently, this is all about Commander. Down 382 to 1542. And this card, a lot of people are just picking up as an upgrade to the Commander 2018 Adaptive Enchantment deck. So it stands for reason that we're finally starting to see some snapback with the cards that spiked heavily like this one. And when you compare this to some of the other upgrades, this one maybe isn't quite as impressive. Part of the reason it's going down as sharply as it is, too. All right, let's move on to the top five modern legal cards that have gained value this week. So I mentioned this a little bit, but Commander is just so hot right now. Modern is a little slow, although there's some big modern events going on this weekend. So I do anticipate a little bit of a change. 
So maybe next week we'll be talking about more relevant, actual, modern, playable cards. But you're going to notice a lot of cards on here are moving thanks to Commander again. Guilt Leaf Palace. This does see modern play at number five, up a dollar ninety-two to twenty-three seventy-four. And this is from Lorwyn, and it's a rare, so it does tend to be a little spiky since that said did have a lower print run. But right now, elf decks are pretty popular in modern, and they're not necessarily always putting up huge results, but there's a lot of people playing them, and they can be successful at times. So this doesn't really surprise me. Also, elves just generally are a fun tribe, so a lot of casual players are always happy to play them as well. Number four, another modern card. Speaking of tribal, it's Cavern of Souls, up $1.96 to $84.97. This is the original Avacyn Restored version. And you know, we got a reprint of this as a mythic in Modern Masters 2017. That wasn't all that long ago. So I don't think anyone's anticipating seeing this card show up anytime soon. Because of that, people are willing to pay $80 to $90 for it, and I don't think that's going to change. As a matter of fact, this card probably continues to creep up over time until it finally does get another reprint. But until then, it's just such a big card and some big decks. I mean, I mentioned Elves already, but Humans is a huge driver for this. Eldrazi, I could probably name decks all day long. And it's not just a modern either. This is a key card. Number three. Okay, let's talk Commander now with these last three cards. Privilege Position, up 289 to 2343. This has been in our videos for a couple weeks now, but this is a great upgrade to that Commander 2018 Adaptive Enchantment deck, and this card does remain hot, where some of the others are cooling off a little. Number two, Ink Eyes, Servant of Oni. Three versions moving significantly this week. Betrayers of Kamigawa going up 193 to 644. Plane Chase 2012 going up 210 to 844. From the Vault 20 going up 228 to 1198. So what is going on with this particular card? Well, if you remember Subjective Reality, there's a two-color legendary creature in that particular deck. That can't be the commander out of the box because it's an Esper deck and that is in Demir colors. However, a lot of people are just yanking this card out and building around here. It's Yuriko. Yuriko is awesome and there's a ton of people trying to build ninja decks this week. This is a key card, obviously, being a ninja with ninjutsu. A lot of folks are looking to pick this up right now. And number one, also moving because of Yuriko, it's Conspiracy. The Time Spiral version going up $3 to $9.49 with Mercadium Mask going up $6.63 to $11.40. Wow. Okay. So there's other cards that do similar things. In fact, more efficient cards that do similar things. However, this one's a little bit older, a little harder to find, especially in good condition. So it kind of has the standout week. And... Basically, Yuriko wants ninjas, and there's not enough ninjas to build a commander deck, so you're going to throw in cards like this. All right, let's move on to our Vintage Spotlight. I'll tell you right now, the buyouts for Unlimited continue, so we're going to see a lot of those. There's also a couple of reserveless cards from Legends moving this week. The first one is Willow the Wisp from Unlimited, up $1187 to $22. Just an Unlimited buyout. Not a lot to say about these cards I think what's been going on, and I mentioned this last week, Alpha and Beta are just getting too expensive and a little unreliable to trade in, especially with some of the counterfeits out there and such. So I think more and more stores are just trying to trade in unlimited cards and they're trying to pick those up. And because Unlimited's print run was still pretty restrictive, you're seeing some big jumps when stores are buying cards. I think that's mostly what's going on with these particular cards. I mean, there has been some other market manipulation, but that seems to have cooled down as well. You're going to notice also that all of the unlimited cards we look at today, none of them are on the reserve list, and they've all been reprinted. So you can find cheaper copies if you want to, unless, of course, you're a 93-94 player, and of course, that will drive the market too. Mana Flare, here's another one up 1649 to 39.49. Also, a lot of these have been reprinted and revised, and that's a good place to pick them up, and some of them are starting to get a little pricey there too, if you look at things like Dual Lands, of course, or like Wheel of Fortune or some of the other cards. But for the most part, remember, and a lot of people ask me this, a buyout is not going to affect Revise like it affects Alpha, Beta, and Unlimited because there's so many more copies out there. So keep that in mind. No one's ever going to get rich buying out Revise, but there are good cards there that you might want to add to your collection for sure that will go up in value over time. Lord of the Pit, here's another one of 2608 to 49.99. So here's our third Unlimited card in a row now. We'll change things up with Quorum Trench Gnomes, up $30.75 to $69.95. Now, this is from Legends, and it is on the reserve list, so this looks like a reserve list buyout. Kobold Overlord, up $61.70 this week to $94.99. This is another Legends card that is on the reserve list, so that's part of the reason here. Also, Mark Rosewater recently held a poll mentioning this try, which, of course, will bring some more attention on the card. And we go back to Unlimited for our last card. It's Verderan Enchantress, up $69.22 to $159. 
So you look at this and you might think, well, people might be picking this up for the Adaptive Enchantment deck, but I don't really think for the most part that's the case because there's so many other copies of this card you can get cheaper that I don't think necessarily people would zero in on the unlimited version. Some people might, and maybe that's part of the reason it's going up, but I think this is just another one of those unlimited buyouts. This card was heavily manipulated in the market a few months ago as well. You might recall that. Okay, let's move on to our Commander Spotlight. It's a lot shorter this week, but you do see some different cards. The Chain Veil, this one's not too different, of $1.05 to $20.09. Of course, this is good in any deck where you have Planeswalkers, especially if that Planeswalker happens to be your Commander, but this is especially good in the Bant Adaptive Enchantment deck because of its interaction with Estrid. Yuriko, the Tiger Shadow, up $1.34 to $17.64. You kind of knew she had to be here. We've been talking about her in relationship to other cards, but yes, a lot of people are building around her right now. Oracle Amaldiah, up $1.35 to $34.19. Okay, another one we've seen a lot of. This is great in the Nature's Vengeance Jun deck. Nesting Dragon. This is one of the more popular cards from Commander 2018. It goes up $3.29 this week to $5.44. You'll find this in the Jun Nature's Vengeance deck. And even though it's a great landfall card, it also has crossover appeal for players that enjoy playing dragon decks. Cleansing Meditation, up $3.89 this week to $5. Now you look at this and you might think maybe this is tech against the Adaptive Enchantment deck. However, yeah, maybe that's partially the case. But this is even better in that deck with Enchanted Evening, a card that's been very popular over the last few weeks. So I think a lot of people were picking up Enchanted Evening and then kind of stumbled upon this one and it heats up this week. Reconnaissance goes up 463 to 1494 this week, another new one. So first off, this is good in Commander for any attack trigger creature that you have generally, but there are people right now building odd Yennet decks. This is perfect there. Yennet can attack, you still get the trigger, and if you need to pull the card out of combat, you just do it with this. It's really cheap. It's also an odd number card. What's not to love here, right? So Devi Excavations, up 735 to 1999. Now this is a reserve list card from Alliances, which is part of the reason that it's jumping like this. People are picking this up to add to subjective reality. I don't know if I'm sold that it's all that great there. I think it's fine, but there's a lot of cheaper cards that might even be better. It is a land though, I'll give it that. All right, our last card, Active Authority, up 764 to 849. Little surprised it took as long as it did for this to catch on. We talked about this a few weeks ago in our upgrade video for Subjective Reality. It's great in that deck, really works well with a featured Planeswalker there. So, yeah, I think this is a card that was maybe a little overdue for an increase, but this week, definitely people are noticing it. All right, with that being said, that's our Market Watch for this week. A little shorter this week. Things are calming down a little. I expect next week to be a little more heavy on Modern. I do think Commander will continue to sizzle. I do think Standard will also continue its slump, but there's some big modern tournaments going on, so we'll see what happens. I do think we might see some new cards that are catching on due to modern builds. So more on that next week, but until then, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe, and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible by the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store, where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.